Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching the Disruptive Investing News. Um, so it's time to talk about tractors. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you, you guys have been waiting. I know. Um, but not just any tractors. These are the electric tractors of the future. You know, the ones that sneak up on you in a cornfield because they're so darn quiet. Sounds like a new horror movie. <laughs> it is. Genre. <laughs> The Monarch tractors. tractors. <laughs> okay, so get this. Foxconn, the company that you might know for assembling iPhones, just rolled out their first Monarch Mark V electric tractors off the assembly line at their Lordstown plant in Ohio. So it's it's like Apple's sleek design met John Deere's rugged functionality, and they had a love child. So now, if you're wondering how a company that makes smartphones ended up producing electric tractors, well, let's just say it's a classic tale of diversification. So Foxconn was looking for new ways to expand. And in late 2021, Lordstown Motors, do you remember them? Mm. They're the ones that make the endurance. They were struggling. They agreed to sell its manufacturing facility to Foxconn for $230 million in cash to help keep their Lordstown uh, endurance afloat so that they can continue on their quest to build the all-electric pickup truck. So eight months ago, Foxconn shared the news of this agreement to build the all-electric Monarch tractor. And last week, the first five tractors were built. The Monarch electric tractor is said to have a range of up to 10 hours of operation on a single charge with the ability to recharge in just under two hours. Um, now, that's what I call a power lunch. And it's not just about the environment, folks. These electric tractors are packed with features to make farming more efficient and, dare I say, enjoyable. Uh, they come with autonomous capabilities, meaning they can do things like plow the fields all by themselves. It's like the tractor version of a Roomba, but for cornfields. But seriously, this is a huge step forward for the agriculture industry. These electric tractors have the potential to reduce emissions and make farming more sustainable, all the while helping farmers save on fuel costs. Plus, it's just plain cool to see a tractor that looks like it belongs in a sci-fi movie. Because remember that sci-fi movie uh, Interstellar mm. where they had like autonomous tractors, mm. but their tractors were still like diesel powered, mm. whatever, and they didn't really seem that. Everything in Interstellar was somehow, <laughs> it was like the failed version of earth you know right. like that's why they all had to move that's a good point so i gotta say it's really cool to see battery electric autonomous tractors being built in america by a taiwanese company i know that that is kind of weird by the way you can watch our interview with monarch's executive team here on di and that was a while ago it was so, so it's kind of cool to see what they were thinking back then compared to now i i mean a lot of what they were talking about is still baked into this tractor. The thing that still really stuck with me is that normally you have a tractor that has an engine and the engine can spin things like the wheels. But the, the other thing it can have is a PTO, which is not uh, a parent teacher organization. It's also not pay, uh, paid time off. It is a power takeoff. Um, oh, right. That's what powers all the machinery on a tractor. So normally if you have some machine on the back of the tractor that's doing chung, 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 you know, cutting up corn or doing whatever, you know, magic stuff that farmers do, um, it has to be it has to take spinny energy and turn it into whatever it needs to do. Mm -hmm. um, this is fine, um, but it means you can't have terribly complex mechanisms. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they have to be complex in order to do stuff. But um, having an electric tractor with a big old powerful battery means that you can now just plug something in and have it digitally do stuff, which means that you can change speeds easier and just have way more flexibility. This is a part of the disruption here that I don't think most of us understand because you have to be a farmer to understand it. And I don't claim to be, you know, in agriculture and understand it fully. But if you do a power takeoff, what you're telling, like Jesse just said, you're taking something that rotating, you're going to have to put on a whole bunch of gears to get it to transfer that energy to whatever it is you want to be doing, like a trucker, trucker, trucker motion, which means that it wears out mm -hmm. and it breaks. Which means that as a farmer, when that happens, you can't just be like, oh, four weeks, I'll wait for the part. Mm -hmm. You need to fix it immediately, which means you have to spend a fortune to get parts sent to you to stop what you're doing because the plants won't stop growing, right? With this new electrical system, which I know that Monarch hasn't perfected it yet, it's not quite there yet, but what you'll be able to do will mean that they talked about this, I think. You'll be able to take a broken motor, let's say, and just re replace it mm -hmm. way quicker than having to replace a whole transmission. Um, and it's probably gonna end up being cheaper. So just that one change, while it doesn't seem that disruptive, I think is actually going to be disruptive. And I mean, it has a PTO as well. So no, it's it, not now like, it does, it's not right? Like we're no, I mean, changing everything. Now it does, but in the future, right. they are going to switch probably to a much more simple system. Well, and also, um, I don't know if you've ever seen like um, the video of like, um, autonomous uh, like robot arms like picking apples and stuff and it's like um, 
that's a thing that you can do, but you right. really do need like power, right. you know, like to power the robot arms because it's not it's not an insubstantial amount of energy. So having like a big power bank that you're that can drive around and pull a trailer that has special uh, Apple picking robot arms. Well, and let's talk about Tesla's Optimus or humanoid robot. Um, when those are in the fields picking things, which they will be, um, they're going to need power and you're probably going to want the tractor to probably be the mo the mobile power source for them and so they don't have to walk all the way back to the farm to plug themselves in. Mm -hmm. They can just probably plug in at the tractor and get a boost. Right. I mean, there's lots of different stuff with, with I mean, that they talked about in the interview that you should probably go watch, um, all sorts of sensing and stuff like that, all sorts of stuff that you can uh, put on this tractor because it's so powered and connected, it's going to be able to do a lot of um, stuff that I think that farmers could do today. But, um, you know, when you're trying to upgrade your tractor, it gets well, expensive. Well, think too. about the other part of this. The disruptive part here is that if this tractor can autonomously go do its job, you just freed up an operator. Sure. Um, and so that's a huge, huge piece of this that you basically just saved yourself an entire employee, mm. um, not to mention the maintenance, not to mention the fuel costs. Mm. And the other thing is, Monarch, the reason why you may not have heard of them is because they started with a very specific tractor. There's a very thin tractor that will work very well on fields in California, especially that are vineyards, where you've got a very small space between the rows. This will not work for many. We've heard from some farmers who are just like, it's not a big enough tractor for my farm. Right. They did that on purpose. They knew that if you're running a vineyard, you probably are more open to the environment. And your customers would want to see that. Too exactly. They, they want to see. And... Your, exactly. <laughs> so they, it was smart. It's like Tesla. They started with a very niche product, a very high end kind of luxury tractor, if you will. And then they'll be able to take that and grow. I think that's super smart. And there's really not much competition in the electric tractor market right now. There's a Solec Selectrac. There's Monarch and I think like one other. And in, in the years that we've been doing the show, there's been very little growth in that field. And I think Monarch is one of the first to actually start kind of mass producing along with Selectrac. Um, so it's just really cool to see that they're finally getting that production going and it's in America. And by the way, we've talked to some farmers mm -hmm. who have talked about how much um, incentives there are. In California, for instance, you can practically get a free tractor if you turn in your old diesel one. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of farmers, this won't be a big jump. If they've especially got an old 80s tractor mm -hmm. that's about to die, trade it in, get an electric tractor. And I think it's just like with the cars. It's butts and seats. Once you experience, or maybe butts not in seats because it's autonomous. Once you get to experience how this tractor actually works, I think a lot of the fears that many farmers might have, like, well, how do I plug it in? How do I charge it? How long will it run? Once they see that it probably works and that it's probably better, um, I think that those Fears are going to go away and they're going to want more of them. And here's the last piece. When you put an autonomous car on the road, you have a lot of edge cases that you have to worry about and cars go fast. Tractors go slow and there's not a lot of edge cases because it's just going in and out of rows of farms. And so worst case, if it bumps into a plant, you ruin the plant. I think that this is a much easier autonomous um, project. It, mm -hmm. it really doesn't require the... Um, the, the amazing compute power and the edge cases that a, say, Tesla does. Right, because it doesn't have to drive across the country. It has to drive across your fields, which you know can map, have GPS location turned on. As soon as it loses GPS for whatever reason, it can stop. There's no traffic behind it, right. honking at it. Um, it's it's a lot easier. So go check out our interview because um, one of the co-founders of this company is from Tesla. I mean, they really do get it. It's really exciting. Hope you found this enjoyable. This is the kind of technology and disruption that we like to talk about on this show, things that you may not have heard of. It's not necessarily because you want to invest in them. I don't think you can invest in Monarch right now, but it's things to know about and keep your eye on because this is where things are headed. Thank you for joining us on Disruptive Investing News.